Hey. 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 Nice. Confident. Fonz like. Hey, yes. <laughs> Fonz like. Uh, Fonz without... like because there's a strike, so it's all reruns. That's right. Yeah. So it's just old Fonzie. All, all you can watch now is Happy Days. That's right. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you in a second, I did run into a Happy Days clip that I'd forgotten about, and I'll tell you. I don't know how I ran into it, but it's very funny to watch an old clip of a show dealing with an issue that later on you go, oh, that's a bigger issue than you're pretending it was. Yeah, that happened a lot in that decade. Oh, and it's almost always something where you're like, oh, I think that that's a precursor to sexual assault. Almost always it's that. <laughs> yes. But this is episode 79. Wow. Of Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics. Lyrics. We analyze the lyrics, not Billy Joel uh, newsletters. We don't, we don't psychoanalyze Billy Joel. Uh, we do. <laughs> we do know, but <laughs> it's not hard. And we're not, and we're definitely not qualified, but. No. Yeah. We're not qualified to analyze the lyrics, really. <laughs> that's true we're barely qualified to use zoom that's right uh, i should speak for you i'm barely qualified you're uh you're a rocket scientist right i i am yeah yeah i'm under utilizing my potential yeah well for <laughs> now i uh so i ran into this uh clip of happy days and it's the fawns defending Richie against these guys in college who had hazed him. And the way they had hazed them was by putting drugs in his drink. <laughs> drugs? Yeah. They slipped in a Mickey? Yeah, but they didn't say what the drugs were. And they made a point of not saying it because the guy goes, I only put it, hey, I don't care what you put in this drink. So that must have been we're not allowed to say or something. I'm sure. And uh, they treated it as funny. And I'm like, I don't think that's, that's very weird. Yeah, that's borderline. Yeah. Maybe it was a, were you watching like a compilation of <laughs> unsettling moments? Because <laughs> there's a bunch of them, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. There's, there's a lot of just rapey jokes. Yeah. In that era. In places you wouldn't expect to see them. Years ago, I saw the great um, um, Rodney Dangerfield on Carson, and it was an old clip. And he's doing his stand up, and it's, you know, it's network TV. It's a regular set for a network audience. And he does a joke about a baseball team taking turns on a woman. Wow. And that was the topic of the joke. There was no ambiguity about what this was about. Huh. And I think the punchline was everybody had a turn. <laughs> okay. And at the time I saw it, I was like, what? And to the point where I was like sending the clip to other people via text, I was like, watch this and tell me what you think. <laughs> yeah, am I watching this wrong? Yeah, and Carson was happy about the funny joke we'd all just seen. And yeah, Rodney killed coming over. Not like, hey, we're sorry about what you just saw. We just had him arrested. It wasn't that. <laughs> wow. My first thought was... Remember, I was watching an old episode of MASH. Great show, MASH. Yep. Uh, I don't remember why this was happening, but somebody was trying to make out with Margaret in her tent. And it wasn't Frank. It wasn't a usual suspect. And she didn't want that. And she started yelling rape. And uh, cut to Hawkeye and Trapper in their tent. And Trapper looks at Hawkeye and says, you know, I've never been to a rape. And Hawkeye says, maybe for your next birthday. Oh, God. <laughs> the weirdest. And it's like, ha! Ah! <laughs> a lot of times you watch those old shows and you're like, ah, things, nothing's changed. Everything's the same. Oh, families, relationships are the same. And then once in a while you're like, ah! Yeah. What planet is this from? Yeah. Oh. 
Oh, Here, here's what Rodney's joke should have been. This just dawned on, dawned on me is at the end of it, he goes, man, and I thought I didn't get any respect. There's a... <laughs> what a very special, <laughs> very special episode of Rodney Dangerfield. Right. Yeah, how foul, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't give any respect either. <laughs> I don't... I'm not familiar with respect. I don't respect that entire gender. Oh, yeah. Wow. You know, he was uh, famously a giant cokehead. Indeed. Which I, you know, speaking of uh, comedians and cocaine. Yeah. Uh, oh, the times that they aren't a changing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was, he was famous for that. And he was famous for being well endowed. That was well known about Mr. Oh. Dunfield. Yeah. And, as well as the confidence. And because of the way comics are, there were a number of comics who could verify it because they were like, yeah, one time I was in his hotel room and he showed me. <laughs> Again, another <laughs> career-ending scandal in a normal situation. Well, would Every it be yeah. because if, like, say, Kroll, Dave Kroll, is his name Dave Kroll? Is that his Nick name? Kroll? Nick Kroll, let's say Nick Kroll showed his dick to Jim Gaffigan. Sure. And Jim Gaffigan goes, oh, you want to hear something funny about Nick Kroll's dick? I don't think he'd be canceled then, right? Because that's okay, right? I mean... It's consent, right? <laughs> sure. It's tough, because now there would be, like, NDAs and contracts. Right. I was like, I'm going to show you my dick, but will you sign this? Right. And then your lawyer will look at it, and my lawyer will look at it. And then when they both, let's get on a text chain with both our lawyers. <laughs> yeah. Everyone confirms, then I'll show you my dick. Yes. And then Gaffigan has a bit where he's like, why did that guy show us? <laughs> oh. Pursuant to our earlier conversation. <laughs> He's an only talk about the dick in the small voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> say that it's big in the small voice, please. Oh, Just Please say it's big in the small voice. <laughs> I have always wanted to pitch to Gaffigan to do a whole special in just the small voice. Dude, that's that was an idea I had too. I <laughs> want that. That's all I want. Small voice hour. It, it never stops. And the whole time, the audience, oh, yes, absolutely. Oh, it wouldn't, everyone would be very mad within three minutes. But, and within 20, you and I, apparently. Yeah. But do you think, because here's what I think I think you're right. Within three or four minutes, you're mad. But within 12 minutes, if you've gotten through it, you love it. Comes back around. Whoever's left. <laughs> yeah. Or, hasn't been walked. He's, so, uh, he's, you're at home today. I assume you're at home tomorrow. I'm. Uh, well, I went and I went into the office today. Yeah. To uh, for the old rundown, informational stuff. Where do we go from here, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and then we went and picketed in front of the Peacock headquarters. Cool. For two and a half hours, walking in circles. Day one of the strike, lots of solidarity and enthusiasm. We'll see how long that holds up. Yeah. I mean, the solidarity will always be there, but the energy. Yeah. Um, everyone was shot out of a cannon today. Yeah. Um, lots in, you know, lots of uh, trucks honking as they drove by. Yeah. And, and all that. Cardio, you got your cardio in. That's important. I, I, got, I went in a few circles. Yeah. very slowly <laughs> it was you know again day one lots of turnout not much room in new york city yeah we'll see how it goes and day 150 i feel like it's going to be a long one how come uh lots of sticking points i think it feels to me like the studios want to break it they kind of want to break it the whole industry and remake it in the image of a tech sector. They want it to be like tech, where 
one guy makes uh, hundreds of millions and everybody else comes and goes and never has a permanent job. Ah, uh, okay. That is, that is their dream. Now, you can't make television and film like that, but they don't know that because most of them came from tech. Yeah. They think, well, we got a streamer and that's an app, so we know what we're doing. Yeah. But that's not how that goes. Yeah. I hope I'm wrong. I often, I mostly am wrong. So we'll see. Well, I, I hope you're wrong too, but um, it wouldn't surprise me because people are stupid. And yep. Because one of the things you'll say, you'll often say, people are selfish. But it's not actually necessarily all bad to be selfish. It's bad to be selfish and stupid. Sure. Because if you were smart, you'd go, well, I am selfish. I would like to keep all of the money for myself. However, without this particular set of skills, there's no money. Yeah. And there's no replacing this set of skills with pure tech. You can't. Right. And you're not going to be able to replace everybody with kids just out of college. That's not how this particular industry will ever work. No. You'll find occasionally some talented writers, but they won't be, even if they have the potential, they won't be as good yet. And that's what you need a union for is the yet. Is the yet. It's to uh, nurture and uh, build a farm team. Yeah. I mean, look at, you look at old Hollywood and, and the reason you can't make an old musical anymore and you'd want to. Have, you know, every now and then they're like, we'd like to make a golden age style musical. Well, you know what? The infrastructure doesn't support it because right. the support for a Gene Kelly to exist doesn't exist yeah you don't you have to spend the money on that and you stop spending the money on that so you don't get a gene kelly anymore they want to just spend money on pr yeah like make the show for nothing and then we'll just advertise the hell out of it and people will think it's good and yeah. then they'll pay to see it and we'll fool them and that will work twice and that's it. Yeah. Then they stop believing you. So we shall see. I mean, it's hard enough to find good enough good writers to do, make good material with the existing tried and true system. Yeah. Much less with this uh, tech vision of like, oh, we'll just bring in writers for a week, have them write the whole season. And then fire them before we have to give them health insurance or anything. And then we'll have all the material. Yes, but you will have garbage. Yeah. And then AI will fill in the blanks. Yeah. No. Yeah. AI is not ready. Have you ever watched, so watch Breaking Bad, of course. Of course. Have you ever watched the Mexican television Breaking Bad? No. Well, you should. It's awful. It's so wonderfully awful. Huh. It is and it's a shot for shot remake. But wow. they were like, okay, you see how they did this with the camera? Let's do this poorly with the camera. <laughs> Let's do this with a cheaper camera. Yeah, and not an understanding. So as an example, you remember the uh, Salamanca twins? That's them. They were the Salamanca twins, right? Yeah, yeah, the cousins. Yeah, the cousins. Who are these beefy, beautiful, dangerous-looking men? Yeah. Well, they were replaced with two fat twins wearing cowboy hats. And you remember their amazing shoes? Oh, yeah, amazing snakeskin boots. Yeah. Imagine you got that at a payless. You got those shoes. <laughs> oh. So it's that. And then you remember the scene where the bullet drops at their foot before they when they have when they try to kill Hank Schrader? Yeah. They replicate that shot. 
badly. <laughs> the way you would if not only didn't you have a dolly, you've never heard of a dolly. Amazing. He mentions a dolly and they say, KS, KS Dolly, who is Dolly? That's what they say. <laughs> because they don't <laughs> know. It's awful. And it is exactly what TV would be without a union, without professional yeah. learning over time. Well, we might see some. It's pretty worth watching for the funny. It's just the uh, the just in the uh, Saul Goodman character. Oh God, that's, he's so greatly not funny, and it's so funny. He has. <laughs> I managed to find a gentleman with no charisma. <laughs> oh, great. We, um, when we were in Ohio, Sue's brother made us watch, um, ironically, made us watch a show on, where was that? On Freebie um, called The Sniffer. Um, it's a Russian cop show where there is this detective who has an incredibly well-developed uh, sense of smell. And that's how he solves crimes with his crazy good sense of smell. So it's like he has to wear like a plastic nose plug everywhere he goes. Otherwise he'll be overwhelmed with information and he only takes it out at the crime scene. And then he'll smell around and be like, oh, there was a 40 to 50 year old man here with a nicotine patch on his right arm. <laughs> and it just, it was like, it's like the mentalist, but with just smelling. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, which fine, fine. I, you know, not the greatest idea. Fine. But made so poorly, so cheaply. The dialogue was so terrible. The guy had no curtains. It was like, yeah, it was all the thing. It was like, you can see all the things that they didn't know about how to make a show. There was this one scene, there was a guy who was supposedly on the run and hiding in the woods. Um, and they kept showing him in this forest where the trees were so far apart. <laughs> it was like he was hiding in an orchard. It was like, what well, you can't, and then he would like sit on a rock in a clearing and eat his lunch while he was supposedly hiding. Oh, it's like the basic. Oh, anyway, it's episode seventy nine of Alex and Jim. Analyze, God, that's Analyze Billy Joel lyrics. All right. Well, listen. This week, I'll try to watch the sniffer. You please look watch. for real. Here's a little homework for both of us. I'll watch the sniffer. You watch the Mexican Breaking Bad. You don't have to watch the whole thing; just watch an episode because it's. Now where will I? Where will I find this on YouTube? You can easily find it on YouTube. Yeah, and uh, it should <laughs> exist, and it's incredible. I bet they didn't even pay for it. I bet you they got a. I bet you they paid for Netflix and watched Breaking Bad. Is what happened. I'll bet you're right, and they're just like they won't bother suing us. Yeah. <laughs> The Skyler on the, oh my God, the Jesse is ridiculous. Uh, oh my God. The every, oh, and lastly, I'll say the Walter White has Walter White's goatee. I'm pretty sure they got it at a novelty costume shop. Just glued it on. Glued that son of a bitch on. So, wow. So we are talking about this is the time. This is the time from the the bridge. Oh, the bridge, nicely done, sir. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. I am an expert. I picked this because my wife has a friend named Cassandra Kabinsky, who is a recording artist and has recorded real albums. She's not just a friend of my wife's, but she's also quite talented. And she did a really interesting cover of this. Oh, cool. I'll link to it at the end. So as per usual, in the descriptor, you'll see a link to the official Billy Joel song. But at the end, you're going to hear her version, which is an interesting take on the song. And it's one of those times when just the fact that it's another gender gives it a whole different life the way that it will. 
Oh yeah, sometimes that's nice. Yeah. Okay. You know, like girls just want to have fun was so much better when Cindy Lopper covered it. <laughs> no, that was a cover. Of who? Some creepy dude. The original is awful. Wow. It's, it's just girls just want to have fun. He's like, God, ah, you're not allowed near women. Don't. It was, it was Rodney Dangerfield. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh no After I didn't know that. did you know that producer didn't know yeah that's one of those weird surprises uh because i saw it i was like why is he covering this and i was like he's not covering it she wow. wow and i would say she's not even covering it she's fixing it she's, she's doing she's doing the original second yeah just lord it's awful Wow. Yeah. Worth listening to just because now that you've heard about it, you're going to have to listen to it out of curiosity. I know. What's up with that? How bizarre. Yeah. Uh, you started last week. So how about I'll start this week? Start her up. This is from the album, The Bridge. Absolutely. 1986. Uh, so here's what I will say first about the song is the music. It took me a while to like this song. Yeah. It's not the hookiest. And yeah, that's a what a great way to say it because it actually is a good song. It's just I'm a simple man. <laughs> and yeah. So I had to come to understand the music. This is not a song where I would say he's trying to sound like anybody. This no, is a really cool so. song. But it's interesting music, right? It's interesting. Yeah, I don't think I ever got into the music of it. I think the seagulls took me out early. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I've come to appreciate it when it comes on my Spotify when I'm just saying, hey, play nothing but Billy Joel and make my wife mad. <laughs> we walked on the beach beside that old hotel they're tearing it down now, but it's just as well. I haven't shown you everything a man can do. So stay with me, baby. I've got plans for you. Um, that Well, that could go either way, as long as it's a good relationship. But, <laughs> but yeah. to talk about the first two lines, we walked on the beach beside that old hotel. They're tearing it down now, but it's just as well. I kind of like that. I kind of like that more than the rest of it. Yeah. I kind of want a whole song about the hotel. Yes. Or at least does it ever come back? I don't think it comes back. I don't think so either. But that's I, an interesting image. Yeah. And if you're, you know, if you're from Long Island or you've been to Long Island, you've seen it. Yeah. They're constantly either tearing down an old hotel or putting up a new shitty one. Yeah. And the word that... Besides that old hotel, to me, it implies that maybe this hotel meant something to the two of them. So they, they, yeah, they at least been together long enough that they, you know the hotel. Yeah, remember the hotel from the time we did the thing. Yep, and there's and he's saying and there's a mild amount of nostalgia, but then he's like, eh, but it's also kind of a shitty hotel, so fine. Yeah. Is it a metaphor? I don't think so. I think just setting this mean it he's I feels like more than anything he's explaining why there's seagulls. <laughs> <laughs> we walked on the beach. Yeah. I haven't shown you everything a man can do, so stay with me, baby. I've got plans for you. I think what this means is. Maybe I haven't been as good a partner or provider or something as I could have been, but I intend to do better. I hope that's what it is. That seems right. Yeah. And i that's nice. I think that's a certain kind of romantic, a more, more realistic romantic, and I kind of like that. I don't love the phrasing, uh, just say everything I can do. You know, yeah. I haven't shown you everything a man can do. It's a little. Sexist and dated. 
a dated uh, or regional problem. Sure. Let me show you how a man changes a tire. <laughs> well, just show me how you do it. Also, everybody does it the same. There's only really one way. Yeah, and and if there is another way, why are you showing me? I'm going to have to see the other way. Right? Aren't you going to change all the tires that we? Why do I have to learn this? Are, are you leaving? are you leaving me? Is there a lady who could show me how a lady changes a tire? Because I might need to do it too. Is there a a, a bad comic from the '80s who can show me how a black guy changes a tire? <laughs> white guy changed the tire like this yeah or can john mulaney do the voice for me <laughs> uh, problematic yes this is the time i'm going on yeah this is the time to remember because it will not last forever these are the days to hold on to because we won't although we'll want to I like that. I like that a lot. I like the idea of acknowledging that, man, we're going to remember this and we're going to want it to be this way, but it won't. It so won't let's, remember it. Let's get into it now. Yeah, that's just a, a nice acknowledgement of how memory works. And a lot of songs won't admit. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking of Glory Days, Springsteen's Glory Days. Feel like there are similar sentiments there. Yeah. It's like and where he's like, Oh, I, I hope I don't sit around talking about it, but I probably will. I like that song a lot as far yeah. as the first songs go. And we went to see Springsteen a few weeks ago. Dude. He played for an hour and a half before I recognized the song. And then it was Glory Days, and I was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a casual fan. Yeah. And uh, that show was not for me. It was for I, Deep Cut fans. I love so much Bruce Springsteen, but if I went to a concert, it, you have to know so much. Yeah. That's like the, like he, the not, a, not a banter guy. He did like 12 songs in a row without saying hello. I was like, okay, so you either know the songs or fuck off. <laughs> That's great. Uh, a lot of his, see, his second album is the song where you're like, ah, here he is. His second album is where he really hits it, but he'll still play the first album. But his second album is wonderful because you'll hear just a lot of really, he's always had some good sad songs too. If you like sad, there's Springs. He He's great, but if you're on the outside, man, you are on the outside. Yeah. <laughs> they all sound the same, or a lot of them do. Yeah. The casual fan. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. I mean, he doesn't have a ton of range in his voice. Yeah. That's not his fault. He's a working man's poet. I don't know. Sue's making faces at me. She's a super fan. She loves Mr. Springsteen. And well, she said, there's a lot to love. She's right in the middle of her podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, did I get to the end? Because oh, we won't, oh. although we'll want to. This is the time, but time is going to change. You've given me the best of you, and now I need the rest of you. That's good. I don't love the best of you, rest of you thing. Oh, really? So it's a little I'll... Dr. Nick. It's a little what? Dr. Nick. You've tried the best. Now try the rest. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's similar to why I do like it. I you know, what I like <laughs> is I like, you know, when you get to a point in a relationship where you're like, well, okay, I guess the thing that's not great about it is you never acknowledge this, it just happens. But here he's acknowledging, look, we've had all the like you being your best version of yourself and me being the best version of myself. But now's the time to just be the other stuff that's really there, which really just happens. It's not actually something you acknowledge. It's something that happens at home where you go, oh, this is what you're like at breakfast. Or <laughs> right. 
Oh, you're going to run at me with tiny scissors and cut my eyebrows off before I leave. Great. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like today, me and my wife had a little moment. And then it made us laugh because it's a funny thing that we do to each other where we're mean to each other in different ways. And we realized that the way she's mean to me is she'll just say something loud and it's over pretty quickly. I'm mean in a passive aggressive, hilarious way. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you both think it's hilarious? After the fact, yes. After the fact, okay. You're having fun for the whole 11 hours. Yep. But afterwards, you're both having fun. Yep. No, I'm only saying that because I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. How do you get her to find it hilarious? <laughs> when I, we, I'm having problems with that part. Here's where we find it funny equally is in the moment acknowledging it's true once it's been settled. Ah, okay. That's it. I got to get her to admit it's true. And to see that, isn't this a funny true thing about both of us that we're doing this con nonsense? And, and isn't this the game that we do all the time? Fine tuning, some fine tuning. I'm going to work on it. Well, listen, we've been doing it for 36 years, so it takes a while. So <laughs> That's true. You're well ahead of me. All right. Yeah. You be posted. Yeah. Um, I do like that sentiment. I think I just don't like the best and rest rhyme. <laughs> feel stale stale town fair did you know that before you came into my life it was some kind of miracle that i survived i like that these lyrics or are you just saying this to me um it is also true of you yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh these are the lyrics did you know that before you came into my life it was some kind of miracle that i survived i like that a lot sure tracks with uh Lyrics of other songs? Yeah. Something... Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, something. I just got an invitation to a meeting that I'm not going to go to. Oh, so not that important. Yeah, no, it was just a bleep blorp on the computer. Okay. It was some kind of miracle that I survived. Someday we will both look back and have to laugh. We lived through a lifetime and the aftermath. I like that quite a bit. That's a good, solid expression of a truth. And yeah. also a way better rhyme. Yeah. Yeah, that rhyme is as well done as the last one was poorly. Yep. And what a, a complete, concise, everybody gets what we're saying. I made a bunch of mistakes, but it didn't kill me. It almost did. You know, I have stories about that. Like, I find the times when I've almost died pretty funny. And it's because I didn't. <laughs> yeah, that's really the only reason. <laughs> Less funny otherwise. I mean, I, I guess I'd be neutral to it if I had. But I think of them and, and I learn little lessons. And there's, you know, I don't know if I, I'll tell a story later, but. I, we all have the story of the time that we did the ridiculously dumb thing and somehow sure. grew. Yeah. Man, I'll, and I, don't you think, by the way, just a side note, a lifetime, if you lived a lifetime where you had never, ever almost risked, it would be a terrible, I think that'd be a terrible life. I don't know. I don't know if it would be terrible. I don't think it would be quite as rich. Yeah. Maybe or full, you didn't get the full experience. Yeah. Sort of got the business class. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'd like that. Yeah. Well, you have to think that now because yeah. you have the other one. <laughs> so who knows? Oh, yeah. Somebody was like, oh, yeah, I've never almost died and I've been perfectly happy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is just the chorus again, right? This is time to remember because it will not last forever. Um, so we'll just say it's the chorus. This is the time to remember because it will not last forever. These are the days to hold on to. Uh, oh, wait, is it different? Last two lines are different. 
All right, so you read the last two real lines of the chorus and then go into the next one. I know we've got to move somehow, but I don't want to lose you now. You know we've got to move? I like that because I, yeah. I know that we're going to have to change. Right. But I'm afraid that that change means I may lose you. Fair. And that's a real life fear. God, that's a good fear. Yeah. It's a good old fashioned fear, um, but it's a weird phrasing. For sure. We've got to move somehow. And then they tore down the hotel. So I don't know. Where, where are we going to stay? Yeah, you had to move quick. The idea of like, yeah, we've got to move on. We've got to something like that. Yeah. The phrasing is super weird, but. Or were they in the hotel when they started to tear it down? <laughs> like, oh, right. Told me. Oh, right. you go, we went out to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> we came back. They were tearing down the hotel. And they were serious about that 11 a.m. checkout. Damn. All right. <laughs> Wrecking ball at 11.05. <laughs> oh. Sometimes it's so easy. This is our, we got a bridge. Yeah. Bridge in the house. Sometimes it's so easy to let a day slip on by without even seeing each other at all. But this is the time you'll turn back, and so will I. And those will be the days you can never recall. Uh, I only like it if recall has a double meaning. In that these are the days that you never remember, or these are the days that you can never bring back. You can never recall them. Otherwise, it's a it's kind of a string of meaningless sentiments. Yeah, you're right. Because without that, it's clunky as hell. Because I don't think you'll ever turn back to a day that you don't recall. That's silly. <laughs> that seems silly. So the time you'll turn back, and so will I. Those will be the days you... Or you'll look back and try to remember them, but you can't? Yeah, I don't know. Or you'll look back and you'll only remember the times when we were connected and we were seeing each other. Ah. Maybe. You don't remember those weird in-between days where nothing really happened. So it could be that. And, and See what that. the problem is with that? Why would you want to? Yeah. He's basically saying like, oh, we're only going to remember the highlights. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's um, that's how brains work. Yeah. You're lucky if you get most of those. Yeah. No one's ever gone, hey, do you remember when uh you were in your room reading that book and I was uh out in the living room uh taking a nap? Oh, it was good. Yeah. yeah. No, why would you? Remember that book? I remember the book. I don't remember you taking a nap. Uh, it was a good no, I'm taking it out. I don't know what book you were reading. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, it's clunky. You're right. Without the, if you imagine that we're intending the double meaning that these are the days you can never get back again, but I don't think that's there. That's just, you're right. It'd be good if it was. Now we're two thirds of the way in. What's this song about? Oh, that's a good question. I, I, <laughs> I think it's it's a melancholy song about two people who do care about each other and are wanting to grab today and stop taking each other for for granted. And even maybe this line sort of solidifies that because it's like. We, we're we getting in that habit of ignoring each other's presence a lot. We shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Times, this is the time to, not just this, these, not just these are the times to remember. These are times to do things worth remembering. I think that's yeah. what it's about. It's foggy. Yeah. But maybe then... I've given an awful lot of credit if I would say that's the point. It could be. It could but, be. 
when he's saying this is the time to remember, is he saying, hey, how about this time? We should remember it. Or is he saying like, did now is the time we should be remembering? Oh, right. This is the time. You know what I mean? This is the time for remembering stuff. This is the it's time. the remembering hour. Right. Versus the doing. Let me start remembering stuff right now. <laughs> is that what he's doing? Oh, man, that yeah, that could be either one damn thing. You're right. Um, and you're right. It is foggy, which is good for the beach. Huh? He did that. Maybe is it? I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Uh, this is something we'll think about at the old hotel. Where the hell's our hotel room? Oh, no. <laughs> well, we still have some lyrics and maybe they'll answer all our questions. And so we embrace again behind the dunes. This beach is so cold on winter afternoons. But holding you close is like holding the summer sun. I'm warm from the memory of days to come. Hmm. So we embrace again. I think this is about trying to reconnect. I think yeah. it is trying to make this a day worth remembering. I Try think he's uh, struggling to feel present. Yeah. In I a relationship that's been going on for a while. He's struggling to feel present and attentive. Yeah. And he has the love. You know how you love somebody and then some days you're like, oh, I can't feel it. Yeah. It's weird today. It feels like that. It's all there. It's the feeling of it yeah. that he's trying to remember. Yeah. I, and be I, present for. So an addiction of mine, I would say a semi-addiction, because it's not like something I ever had to see a doctor for, although I probably should have, um, is I'm... Cocaine. I love, <laughs> can't stop. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> um the crush feeling uh-huh and i know i'm not alone in this it's not like a grand observation but i would just say that i absolutely at some point realized that what i crave sometimes is that feeling the flirty crush and sometimes to the degree that when it comes along i'll get confused by it into thinking that that's the important feeling sure and i think this is kind of no it's not there there's the deeper feeling there's the deeper every day but that feeling of the deep abiding love does take more work and personal reflection and recognition for those days when what you're not you're not feeling squishy you're just you know you're you're in a relationship, you're in a partnership, you're in a in an in an agreement beyond the romance. There's also the agreement of how you handle the day-to-day -day bills and all that nonsense. No oh, fuck the bills, honey. <laughs> we forgot. We were too busy being romantic. Damn it. Oh damn it. Yeah. Now uh, the, yeah, I, I know what you mean. It's not, yeah, it's not it's not cocaine. <laughs> It's uh, vegetables. Yep. But you need those to live. By the way, cocaine is a perfect an, al analogy or, or stand-in. <laughs> I really thought you were going to say it's a vegetable. It's a perfect vegetable. <laughs> it's a vegetable, technically. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a, I would love there somebody to be addicted to cocaine making that argument. It's just such a funny idea. <laughs> uh, uh, um, yeah. I, so I like the song, and it's it's definitely not my favorite song. I don't mind that it's a little unclear because so are relationships and. If that was intentional, that's so damn brilliant. It's hard to imagine it is, but maybe it is. Maybe it is. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I do want to hear 
because of course reading the lyrics i'm hearing his voice in my head i would love to hear the other version and see if like a woman singing it imbues it with more meaning yeah. or it just stays just as foggy this is one of those songs though for sure where some songs just the lyrics on their own stand on their own and that's great some songs you desperately need to hear the feeling and the voice yes and, um and yeah, so when you hear the, I'll send by the, I'll send you the link separate, by the way, so you can hear the song before next week because it's interesting, it's worth hearing. She's got a lovely voice. Um, on BillyJoel.com, there are comments on this lyrics. For Rose Quarashi, love this one along with other most of Mr. Joel's other works. <laughs> And Marty Selnick says something I don't understand, which is, for some reason, the song always sticks in my mind more than his other songs. That's weird, Marty. You're weird, Marty. Marty I, Selnick? Yeah, I can understand liking the song, but this one sticks in your mind more? This one has a hard time sticking in my mind. But yeah. George Bonita, George Benavides. Burgos or Bourgeois, Burgos, probably Burgos, Benavides, said, <laughs> responds to Marty and says, I kind of know wise. W H Y S. He knows wise. He knows wise. <laughs> wow. Uh, I'm so glad I stopped commenting on things on the internet. There's, there's no way to do it as a smart guy. I only do one typo just completely unravels your whole entire point. Yep. I will only do it when I'm in the so here's the only two times I comment when I'm in the mood for a fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or if I have the most benign thing to say, but I feel like I need to say it like Charles Barkley's really on his game in this episode. If I feel like saying that. <laughs> All right, that's nice. Because no one's gonna go, no, he isn't. There, yeah. No one cares about what I say. The only people who are gonna say anything is, yeah, I really enjoy this one too. Yeah. It's just a little connection. Yep. Um, the you know, the only other time is when I want to start a fight and I'll say stuff like, uh, you know, he's not really the Messiah, or I'll you know, stuff like that. <laughs> and that works uh that'll start a good argument yeah hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, said about anybody i mean okay. that about sure. Charles Barkley, you can piss people off by saying he's not the messiah you'll oh. find somebody oh yeah you have the whole city of phoenix up your butt yes. i would like religion better if charles barkley was the messiah <laughs> <laughs> it, a it would make a lot more sense Religion would just make so much sense. I mean, he is a truth teller. Yeah, that's right. Largely his truth, but still. You know what the Messiah said? He said, those San Antonio women are big. That's what he said. <laughs> that's a Charles Barkley quote. Oh, he's doing a show with Gail King. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be the best thing in the world. It's just going to be Gail King apologizing. That show is either going to be fantastic and or canceled in a month. It might be both. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. It could easily be both. What I hope is that it catches fire for a while before the thing happens that destroys it. <laughs> yes. I, I hope it's widely beloved and then canceled. Yeah. And I hope, I hope the race or nationality he offends is at least surprising. I, you know, the odds are like pretty good. Run. I think the odds are pretty good. He'll go after like uh, Inuits. Yeah, but that's that has still been done. Oh, I'm, well, I mean, most of them have been done. Yeah. yeah, I want something. What do I want? Like the fins like why is he going after the fins 
how did this and why is everyone mad can't we we can't go after the fans and suddenly that's a sensitive area yeah it would be great if he created a new area yeah that you can't go into that yeah. we didn't was there i mean he is that kind of pioneer who will discover a new land a, a group that up till then wasn't even mad wasn't even mad going about their business I think rated as one of the happiest peoples on earth. Yeah. But now so pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. all that's left, go ahead and read it. But I think that all that's left is a reiteration of the chorus, but go ahead and read it to close. Oh, the go ahead and read it. This is the time to remember because it will not last forever. These are the days to hold on to, but we won't. Although we'll want to. This is the time. The time is going to change. You've given me the best of you, but now I need the rest of you. Closing with the lyric you you liked the least, I think. My least favorite little rhyme. And then, uh, I think, more seagulls. More seagulls, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not good at analyzing seagull speak, so I'll assume they were just like, about they were saying stuff about love too but it was probably just stuff about fish we're probably just startled by the sounds of hotel demolition <laughs> right yeah <laughs> oh i was staying there they were saying I had my yeah, the best part of this song is that it's very easy to picture the beach he's talking about yep and that means it's a good job in that sense one of the goals as far as that goes goals i would have you can't picture the relationship or the yeah i think this is that beach that's covered in garfield phones we talked about one time <laughs> yeah that seems right <laughs> oh the best for those of you who remember yeah this is good uh, it's worth saying again be i've said this before but i always say it when i get a chance i love old hotels that are about to be that are done being hotels. I love old hotels that are done being hotels that are just there. My friend, I don't know if I've ever told you, there's a golf course in, I think it's Jersey. Um, it's a 27 hole course that is located behind what used to be a Playboy hotel um, where they have a Playboy club in the lobby there and then you could stay in the hotel. And it um, is, of course, defunct and has been for 40 years or so, at least. Uh, completely just overgrown with ivy and stuff. And there's like trees growing out of the front windows. <laughs> uh, no logo anywhere. They took down all the signs. So it's just an old, super haunted hotel. And then you drive into the parking lot. The parking lot's overgrown with weeds. You drive into the parking lot and around the back of it, and there's just a beautiful golf course that's very well kept. And somehow the hotel was just like left, not even torn down. Wow, that's uh, fantastic. It's pretty great. If you could, do you think you'd want to stay in it if they'd let you? Like in its prime, you mean? <laughs> or now? No, now it's it's no. I think you would. There'd be possums. Okay. Stuff like that. Like it's in very serious disrepair. I always want to stay in those places. None for me. Yeah. I'm always, but when I'm on a trip like that, I'm always with someone smart enough to go, yeah, but we're not going to. We're not going to do that, Jim. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I'm i done with adventures. Yeah. That's one time, maybe I, uh, I probably took, who cares? One time on the road, I there was a dilapidated, broken restaurant. It was not a restaurant anymore. It was just, and I had my lunch with me. And I was like, I'm going to go eat my lunch in that restaurant. And I pried open the door. And I went and sat in a booth. And I looked, and there was an old cash register. And it was great. And I sat there, and in my mind, I pretended I was at the restaurant, which made me amused. <laughs> there was just half a chance it was going to collapse on me. It wasn't a good idea, but Lord, I enjoyed it. Wow. The only reason that could happen is I was on a 
comedy tour by myself because nobody else would have went in there with me. No. Yeah, you do have to be alone to do your craziest shit. Yeah. It was dank and it was dark and, and terrible and wonderful that I like things like that. Because I like, when I was a kid, I always wanted to go to ghost towns. And when you go to ghost towns, if you really like the idea of a ghost town, you're always disappointed. Because it's always a touristy nonsense. Yeah, yeah. But if you, you want to you find your own to, ghost town, you want to run into a real place that's dilapidated and that people used to be here. There's a train, there's a little train car, and you go underground and find gold and ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is, I think, California is very good for that. New York City is great for that kind of thing. Yeah. As crowded as it is, there's always some weird abandoned place that there's like subway tunnels that are completely not used anymore. Whole in systems, like stations, perfectly preserved subway stations that uh, just aren't in use. They're bricked up. That's cool. But you, yeah, there's all kinds of uh, ghosts to discover. Chicago was like that too, particularly because of the fire. The great Chicago. Sure. There was a whole entire city built on an old city. And you could still find parts of the old city underneath. The best. Yeah, that's really cool. I remember reading about someone getting caught having stayed in an abandoned subway station for some years in New York. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, whole societies. All right, so who do, who's that? Oh, is that, uh, oh boy. That's uh, Macaulay Culkin. Yeah, it says Kevin McAllister, of course. Kevin McAllister. He's home alone. Yep. Two? <laughs> I don't know. One, it is from the original. Okay. You can tell by the Chicago cop with the Chicago mustache. Yep. And I'm going to give you the greatest hint in the world. What is he doing right now in that photo? What is he literally doing? He is running on ice. That's right. <laughs> that is a good hint. Right? Well, not perfect. Were you close before then? I had nothing before then. I was trying to think if Kevin never gets mentioned in a song. Perfect. Yep. He is literally running on ice. Great. And somebody did his eyebrows for sure. For sure. He, a... um, I was an extra on Home Alone 2. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, in the airport scene. Um, and uh, it was a 16, 18 hour day of filming. And um, young uh, Macaulay had a full emotional breakdown in the middle of filming. And the only way they could get him to stop crying was to let him yell action through the little uh, megaphone. Oh. And I remember hearing Chris Columbus, the director, trying to explain to him that he couldn't yell action because he's in the scene. <laughs> and they finally just let him do it and they shot some footage and then he was fine. Oh. And I presume that footage uh, went away. That's pretty funny. Oh, that's a poor young man. I'm glad he turned out okay. He put up with a lot of bullshit. Yeah, he went a long way, but seems seems uh, he's a funny guy. Yeah, what I've seen on Twitter and such. He's in a band. He created a band of the makes that a parody band of the Velvet Underground. I don't think he still does it. It's the Pizza Underground, and all their songs are about pizza. <laughs> Pretty great. No, I, I got no argument. Great. Yeah, that's what you should do if you have that kind of money and you're done with everybody's bullshit. Do it. Uh, you got some trivia for me, mister? If you know me, and I, I, you do, um, I'm a fan of, it's interesting to me, the various scales that exist in the world. Scales by which you measure things. The scale of mineral hardness is called the Mohs scale, M-O-H-S. Um, there's the scale of uh, chili pepper hotness. 
right? The Scoville scale. Um, there is a, a song uh, on the album Stormfront that mentions the scale for nautical wind speed. Do you know the name of that scale? It's in the lyrics. Uh, fish? <laughs> <laughs> That's two jokes in one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Uh, well, if you don't know it, you'll never guess it. The, is it the other Scoville scale? Is that what they call it? The other Scoville scale. What a trick question that would be on my part. <laughs> I don't know it, unfortunately. It is called the Beaufort scale. Beaufort scale. Okay. It's a great uh, question. We, it's in the song Stormfront. The uh, titular track from that album, which is the song I would like to pick for next week. Oh, great. great. Um, now have our producer did me the favor of Googling Beaufort scale to see how many songs it appears in. <laughs> uh, we found four. Okay, what are the other three? Um, two of them, no idea. Never heard of the band. Never heard of the songs. One of them is a Sufjan Stevens song. That was a very nautical themed song. Wow. That's um, the Beaufort scale. That's great. And and listen, uh, I we'll wrap up quick, but I want to say really quick, how did you enjoy seeing Billy Joel? You just saw him at Madison Square Garden. It was so great. It was like a cabaret show because it uh, was scheduled for like a Saturday or Sunday and it got moved to a Tuesday. Because of hockey. So, because of hockey and uh, basketball some chaos happened so we got our tickets pretty cheap then we got behind us people were pouring in and the people behind us it, it turns out got their tickets for 50 bucks like an hour before the show started so there was a very casual vibe and he did an awful lot of uh telling his weird stories like it felt like a tuesday <laughs> all around um, he did some deep cuts. He did Los Angelinos. Great. Couldn't believe. So great. And he even said, like, I don't think we played this since the 80s, <laughs> which is not true, but still great. Yeah. Um, what else did he do that was a he did some weird ones? He did an innocent man and he sung his own high parts. Shocking. Great. Summer Highland Falls. <laughs> Oh, he did start me up, the Mick Jagger song. Great. <laughs> For no reason. Did he do the whole thing? With, with the dance. He did like two thirds of it and then kind of bailed. He did that at our show too. Oh yeah, with the little dance. And he was making a point. Did he do a joke about he's not really a dancer? Yeah. I think that's a new bit because he did that bit for our show. It's great. Yeah. Like, I'm no Mick Jagger. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. We know. You have two aluminum hips. Him trying to do the Mick Jagger hip thing was so funny because they don't bend that way. It's, even him walking around the stage is funny. And then him trying to do anything extra was great. No. Uh, but yeah, it was great. And then, you know, he went like two and a half hours. Full, the full treatment. Great. Yeah. yeah. So the full treatment. So he was naked with pubes. No, no, that's from oppression. That's a full Monty, you're thinking. I'm thinking of oppression, the treatment. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> uh, the other thing was, you know how sometimes you'll go to a concert and the guy will come out and play his first song and everyone stands up. Yeah. And then they all stand up for the whole show. Not a problem at this show. <laughs> the people down on the floor were a lot of standing, but where we were, everyone stayed in their seats. It was uh, nice. It was nice. That's what I like now. Everyone sit down and listen to the nice man. Dude, I, uh, I, that's in my bit about going to concerts is that I'm at the age where like if somebody stands up, you're mad at them. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. We fucking appreciate things from this position. Yeah. It, but we all have to agree and then it works. Yeah. If we just agree, 
I also don't like to pay $200 for a seat and never sit in it. Yeah. Not just a marker for me to stand in front of. I also say that my definition of good seats is different. My definition of good seats now is near a restroom. Yep. That's my absolute. I nailed it. Look over there. There's the boys. There's the little guy on the sign. I can make it over there. Hell yeah. Yeah. Because when I went and saw him, I wasn't going to skip any songs. It didn't matter because I was like, fucking, I'm seeing everything. Right. But nearby toilet. Yeah. Thank God Stevie's. Oh, Stevie's singing this song. I could pee now because I like oh, That's what I need. A second act. <laughs> I have another performer that I care less for. <laughs> yep. Enjoy enough to not ruin the night. I had to do it. Uh, I was like, okay, it's uh oh it's a hit i can i can leave for the hit oh man I, yeah I don't want to be I'm like oh don't go changing i'm like i'll go pee in <laughs> that's where i'm going i'll come 